Hello everyone. So welcome to another video on Mathematical Olympiads. In this particular one, we will talk about a very interesting problem from Regional Math Olympiad in India. This is from RMO 1991. And the reason I have chosen this problem is you can learn something from it very easily. It's an application of something called the AMGM inequality. So we will talk about that. If you are new to this channel, welcome to the Chinta community. In this particular channel, we talk everything mathematics. So if you are interested in math olympiads, IUQM, RMO, American math competitions and ISI CMI entrances, then feel free to subscribe and join our community. It's free. You can also check the links in the description for more information on our courses. Let's get started with this problem. It says that we have four numbers, A, B, C, D. All of them are positive. And we have to show, the goal is to show that A over B plus B over C, plus C over D, plus D over A is always greater than or equal to 4. So, we want to show this particular thing. Now, of course, if you are seeing our videos for quite some time, you are already familiar with the arithmetic mean geometric mean inequality. But in case you are not, let me tell you, that a hint that you have to use the AMGM inequality is given right here in this fact that all the involved numbers are positive. So this is a little trick that you can remember that if all the numbers involved are positive and you are dealing with an inequality then chances are that you have to use the AMGM inequality. So, this is a classic case of that. Each of the numbers are positive. That means the ratios are also positive. And we can now use the AMGM inequality. I will tell you briefly about the AMGM inequality. I have spoken about this in previous videos. But... Equality, sorry, yeah. But this is also an opportunity to talk about it one more time. What does the NGM inequality say? Well, it says that the arithmetic mean, the arithmetic mean, which is the average, is always greater than or equal to the geometric mean. Geometric mean is another type of average another type of average okay so if you think about it philosophically what is an average an average is a number that gives you a sense of a bunch of numbers what does that mean well if you have a bunch of scores from football matches and the average number of goals scored is 5, then you get a sense of what's happening in all of those matches. It's one number to make sense of a lot of numbers. That's what an average is. Now, when we are in school, we are taught about only one type of average, which is the arithmetic mean. We add the numbers, divide by the number of numbers, and that is the average. But it turns out that there can be a lot of types of averages. There are different types of means. Arithmetic mean, the one that we have learned about, is just one kind. There are other kinds. 
So geometric mean is another kind of average. What you do is you just, suppose you have the numbers A1, A2, A3, A4. There are four numbers. Then the arithmetic mean of these four numbers is simply you add the numbers and you divide by the number of numbers. And the geometric mean is multiply the numbers and you raise it to the power 1 over 4. So, it's a very classic result in inequalities that the arithmetic mean is greater than or equal to the geometric mean. So, why is that? Well, I'll show it for two terms. There are different ways to prove it. There is a very interesting video in our YouTube channel which proves it in a completely different way. But here I will just use one single fact that is square square numbers are greater than or equal to zero. Any perfect square is greater than or equal to zero. We will use that. So for two numbers, for two numbers, it's like this. A1 plus A2 over 2. We want to show that it's greater than or equal to A1 times A2 raised to the power half. So if I square it, A1 plus A2 by 2 whole square is greater than or equal to A1 times A2. So we have A1 plus A2 whole square greater than or equal to 4 times A1, A2. Now, if I take this thing to the left-hand side, I have A1 plus A2 whole square minus 4 A1, A2 greater than or equal to 0, which means A1 minus A2 whole square is greater than or equal to 0. Okay? Now, I want to tell you something about the nature of proof that we just did. I started with, this is what I, what I want to prove. And I did step-by-step -step mathematical processing and I reached a conclusion which is obviously true. Right? So this conclusion is true. Because A1 minus A2 whole square is a square number and it's always greater than or equal to 0. So basically, the proof is backward. You start here, then you go here, then you go here, then you go here, and then you reach this and you say, oh, now that is correct. Right? So it's, it's, it's not hard to see what we just did. It is the standard procedure in many math problems. Okay? So... Uh, you start with what you want to prove and then you go step by step and you reach a conclusion that is obviously true. Then you basically say, okay, if I reverse the process, if I, if I reverse the steps, then I will reach the conclusion that I want to. Okay. So that's a standard way of doing things. Now we have done it for two things. Now we can do this for four things. So for four numbers... So how do we do it? Okay, so if I have A1 plus A2 by 2 greater than or equal to A1 times A2 raised to the power half, and I have A3 plus A4 by 2 greater than or equals to A3, A4 raised to the power half. Now, I could take the average of these two things. So that is A1 plus A2 by 2 plus A3 plus A4 by 2. 2 divided by 2, so that's the average of these two things, which is greater than or equal to the average of A1 times A2 raised to the power half plus A3 plus A4 raised to the power half by 2, which is great. We, 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 we know that that's true because each of these things are true. And that's greater than or equal to the geometric mean of these two things. We know that the geometry, whenever I take geometric mean of two things, 
it will be smaller than their arithmetic mean. So here I can do this very easily. So this is A1, A2 raised to the power half times A3, A4 raised to the power half raised to the power half. This is the geometric mean of these two quantities. And there you go. We have it. We have what we wanted. We have A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 by 4. This 2 and 2 will get multiplied to give you 4. Is greater than or equal to A1, A2, A3, A4 raised to the power 1 fourth. Okay. So we have proved it for 4 things. And that's what we need in this particular problem. So let's do it for this problem. Come back to this particular problem. Uh, the trick is... You have to apply the AMGM inequality to these four things. So these are your objects. Okay. All of them are positive. So now it's just a one liner. You just say, okay, A plus B, A by B, B by C, C by D, D by A divided by four is greater than or equal to the geometric mean of these terms. So that is A by B, B by C, C by A. C by D, D by A, raised to the power one fourth. Now, of course, this is one. So you can just take the four upstairs and you have the final result. So I hope you learned something from this. It's just not a solution video. We want to say more about the math that is going on. Uh, we want to talk about the philosophy. I mean, after all, it's fascinating that there are more than one type of average out there, right? Um, can you tell me a natural situation where the geometric mean will be the right kind of average to make sense of a group of numbers? Think about that question. If you can, give the answer in the comment. In general, arithmetic mean you add the numbers, divide by the number of numbers. That gives us a sense of all the numbers. But there could be certain scenarios where the geometric mean, that is you multiply the numbers and you uh, raise it to the power 1 by the number of numbers. Maybe the geometric mean gives you the right sense of the average of all the numbers. What could be one such scenario? So can you tell it, uh, explain that to me in the comment section? Uh, thank you for watching this video. Keep on doing good mathematics and I will see you in the next one.